Lord Jesus, I thank you for Sunday, and I thank you for this church. There's something so great about going to sleep on Saturday morning, night, gosh, <laughs> and saying tomorrow is Sunday. And so, Lord, I pray that you would be with us as we talk this morning and as we explore this topic using Undatement Center from Stories by the River and Stories in Motion. And as we do that, God, I pray for your revelation and your influence here in Jesus' name. Amen. So it was a number of years ago now that I was sitting in a worship time for a weekly staff meeting. I was working at a church north of Boston. And as I was sitting there, I was processing the things that I felt overwhelmed by, because I think, as it tends to be true for so many of us, I tend to hold all these lofty aspirations, and I'm often trying to keep a lot of things going all at once. And that's just been true for a very long time now. In fact, just this week, one of my tasks was to help host this big party for the Abolitionist Network. And as the week began, I, I, you know, I, I, this is the way it works, right? I always think I'm just getting through one week, and then I kind of look at the next week, and I think, oh my goodness, would you look at that? And so I started the week thinking, what was I thinking taking on this really large event? There's already so much going on. But even though I ask questions like that, I always already know the answer. I took it on because I believe in the work of the Abolitionist Network. And the leader who's stepping down and going on into a new season of life, I hold her in very high esteem. And so I wanted to celebrate her and help her enter this next season of life well. And so I said yes in spite of my schedule, which happens a lot. And specifically, my jobs were like coordinating the food, helping with set up and tear down, and then being the MC for the evening. And that seemed reasonable. It kind of seemed like, what a big deal. Like, it's not, it's not anything for me. I do that all the time. But as we rounded the corner into the final days of getting ready for this party, I had noticed for a couple months now that I had created this spreadsheet for food signups and that it had stayed mostly bare. And that was still true only a few days to the party. And I'd been keeping an eye on that, but I was just sort of letting it twirl around in my head. Like, I'll just adjust how much I'm making based on whatever's in the spreadsheet. So I wasn't doing a lot of trying to fix it, really. And so that was what's going on for me. But in the midst of all that, there was another woman who was looking at that spreadsheet, and she had a very clear hospitality gift. And she took notice of all the empty spaces in the spreadsheet, and she went into high gear. So there were texts at like 7 in the morning. There were requests for conference calls. There were requests from everything from balloons to maps. I was like, I actually don't own maps because they're all in my phone under this button called Google Maps. I just don't keep maps in the house anymore. But it sort of seemed true that she saw me as being in charge of all of this and that she saw herself as being far more capable of this task. And she was ready to dedicate the rest of her week to making sure this party was special. Well, I had some time to give to the party, but not as much time as she had. And so we got on this conference call together. And if I'm interpreting things correctly, I was insulted in the very nicest tone of voice possible, like ever really in the context of insults, which sounded like well, you know, <laughs> some people are really busy and they probably shouldn't be throwing parties like this, but they are, so what are you going to do? <laughs> and, you know, maybe she didn't mean me. Maybe she meant somebody else. But if she did mean me, the truth is she's right. It's been true for years now that I'm doing things that I have no business doing, and yet I keep doing them because I believe that they are things worth doing. And so back to this moment a few years ago in worship, and I'm expressing my feelings to God about my life and how overwhelming all of it feels, and it seemed as though God broke through all of it and just said, you are enough. And I don't know if I was crying yet, but by the time I heard, you are enough, I was definitely crying because this idea that whatever imperfect offering we have to give is enough 
that maybe God is covering the areas where we don't have anything more to give, the idea that God is pleased with us in spite of our own feelings, that things are going to be okay, that I'm okay. That's a beautiful moment when you can see all of the imperfection and see that God is still holding you, you know? So what you are bringing is enough. It doesn't have to be more, and you don't have to be more. It's enough, just as it is. And that was a moment that I wanted to remember. I didn't want that to go away on me. And so we left our worship time together, and I went to my office, and I opened up a Word doc, and I went through all my fonts, and I found the one I would never use on a Sunday morning because it looked a little girly and kind of floofy, and I typed the words, you are enough. And I made them as big as the paper, and I printed it, and I pasted it to my wall so that every time I left the office, I would see those words, you are enough are enough. Now, just this week, I went back and I re-watched Brene Brown's TED Talk on vulnerability. Do you know it? It's a good one. I really enjoy it. And she asserts that the one commonality for people who feel happily connected is that they're willing to embrace vulnerability. They're willing to be honest that they're less than perfect. And it helps others around them as they admit that to do the same so that everybody feels free to say, me too, I am also less than perfect. And that they, they generally feel happier and more connected as a result of their vulnerability. And this reminds me of a verse on the top of your program. This is John 12, 24. It says, very truly I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed, but if it dies, it produces many seeds. And I'm sure you could interpret that all kinds of ways, but it does seem to me that being vulnerable is one way that a single seed dies and then ends up producing many more seeds. So in my case, I'm an imperfect person. Maybe I don't have any business helping to host a party with everything else going on. I'm responding to texts about color schemes while I'm trying to feed my kids dinner. And I'm on a conference call while my baby decides to be really chatty in as loud as voice possible. And I'm asking Dominic if he can come home early from work on his second day at a new job. It's so messy, and it's complicated, and not necessarily ideal. But maybe it's enough. Which, just to say, the event was great. There was more than enough food. Everybody who shared did so meaningfully, and sending Sarah and her husband off with blessings into their next chapter felt so meaningful, like maybe when they stepped into a difficult moment, they'd be able to look back on this moment and remember God's blessing, and it would carry them in some kind of way. And then we got to rally for the future of Abnet, and all of it was worth doing. But it takes risk, and the reward comes in saying yes to that risk. And so in order to talk more about that, I want to show you the latest of the stories by the River Collaborations. Uh, which Trevor is actually featured in. So it's a short comedy about a young man trying to get back into the dating scene. So let's take a look at Undatement Center. <laughs> <laughs> 